I've always been fascinated with how manners and etiquette can shape our interaction as a people, mm. how it can bring orderliness to what we do. Mm. So I've been interested in seeing best work practices. I like things to be done in order. We're humans and we're better <coughs> than animals, okay? So one thing we must bring into place as humans is orderliness. Mm. When it comes to everyday practices, you know there are some people that do things that they don't even know whether they're doing it right or wrong. Mm -hmm. when comes to etiquette. Yes. Now, what do you think are um, some of the basic etiquette rules that some most people do overlook? I think one thing that we may not have been paying attention to is greeting. Etiquette opens doors. Mm. What That's do people good. say about you when you're not in the room? Mm. It's not until you prostrate or you kneel that mm. you've got manners or yes. you've got etiquette. Yes. It's just how you respect other people's opinion, respect other people as humans, That's right. how you behave around people. You know, the more you communicate, the more we measure your confidence. Okay. So if you're not able to speak, then something is wrong. Now, when it comes to family gathering, what advice do you have for maintaining good manners during family gatherings and special occasions? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting question. Hi guys, it's Benzik once again, and welcome to another interview episode of Salamidity. Today we are going to be diving into the world of etiquette and good manners with our special guest here. He is going to be a guide in navigating courtesy across life's diverse landscape. From everyday scenarios to entrepreneurial, we are going to explore how good manners shaped positive relationship, good business success, and also a mindset that goes beyond mere politeness. So but before I bring her in, I'm going to introduce her a little bit by reading just a brief of her profile. Mrs. Oluwato Simbaba Sonia Craig is a seasoned trainer, an international certified corporate coach, an interior designer. Tosin is a trained architect who has since transited into people management for about 15 years now. Whilst working diligently on construction site, she discovered she had a great passion for coaching people and helping them to achieve their goals, and she has since covered a niche for herself in this area of service. Her quest for civility and best work practices better the desire to groom people from all walks of life. Her research and training competence spans several interests in personal development, branding, public speaking, etiquette and ethics, motivation, corporate image, teenage coaching, high impact corporate communication and success strategies. Oluwato Sin has diverse experience spanning various sectors through her work with small medium enterprises, educational institutions, governments, civil society organizations, and non-governmental organizations in Nigeria, as well as international partners and agencies. Today, along with her corporate coaching activities, Tosi manages the Nigerian operations of US-based Performance Fact, Inc., an education consulting and management firm. Olua Tosi has received many service awards. One notable one is the award for the most valuable facilitator for two years in a row. In her training work with Lagos State Universal Basic Education Board, Olua Tosin is a validated facilitator with some financial institutions in Nigeria. She is a soft skill facilitator with the Lagos Business School. Her signature product, Manners on the Go, seeks to speak to the dwindling values in our society where manners and civility are concerned. So ladies and gentlemen, milk welcome. My very amiable special guest here, thank Mrs. Oluwatosin. Thank you. Thank it's you so much for having me. Thank you so episode. much. It's a, it's a pleasure. <laughs> it's very good. Now, to start with, how did you become interested in etiquette and manners, and how how did it all start? I want to know the foundation. Okay, so First Corinthians chapter fourteen, verse forty. And pardon me, that I'm starting with the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. It says that, <clears throat> but all things should be done mm -hmm. decently and in order and oh. that has been my guiding principle i've always been fascinated with how manners and etiquette can shape our interaction as a people mm. how we can bring orderliness to what we do mm. so i've been interested in seeing best work practices i like things to be done in order and i think an influence could be the fact that i'm the first of five children mm. you know you know what it is when you're the firstborn daughter. Yeah, sure. Everything needs to be in order. Everyone needs to be taken care of. So I must have 
gotten the flair for manners and etiquette from there mm. and then oh maybe one thing you didn't mention or did you mention it was that i studied architecture in school mm. practiced for about three years and then i transited into people development i was really fascinated with the learning and development space and the first organization i worked mm. post architecture was like a finishing school. They had a finishing school arm to their business. And so that's where I got the training to be a facilitator in manners and etiquette. So it's a combination of a whole lot of things. My upbringing, um, my outlook to life generally, mm. even as I practiced architecture, <clears throat> there's just something about me that was orderly. Mm. I liked things to be done well. Mm. Um, I think it could also come from my value I have the value of excellence. It's one of my top five values. Mm. So I just want things to be right. I could walk into a space and the first thing I catch is that p picture that you hung on the wall that mm. isn't straight. Yeah. You know, that's just that's just been me. So it's a combination of a whole lot of Have things. you always wanted to do this from day one or you just, you just stumbled on it? At some I point? didn't stumble on it. I think it's a gift. I think it's, I like to call it a calling. <laughs> I like to call it a calling. There's something I understand is that, see, we're humans and we're, we're better than animals. Okay? So one thing we must bring into place as humans is orderliness. Mm, yeah. Is to think through what we do and be respectful to other people. Mm. So I don't think it's something I stumbled on. Yes, my journey in life, somehow your journey in life leads you to where your heart belongs. Yeah, so I could see that my journey in life from my upbringing mm. to schooling. Yeah. I had, for instance, a principal in my secondary school mm. who wanted things to be in order. You couldn't play with the flowers. Mm. You couldn't through so when you go to the talk shop for instance to buy biscuits mm. they would remove the wraps of the biscuits so that you don't litter the school so you know coming from that secondary school to get into architecture where mm. your designs had to be very good and then to work on the fields and get into an organization that was into core mm. um, business the core business of manners and etiquette so i think the journey in life somehow in hindsight has led me to where i am today oh that's cool that's great now when it comes to everyday practices you know there are some people that do things that they don't even know whether they're doing it right or wrong mm -hmm. when it comes to etiquette yes. now what do you think um some of the basic etiquette rules that some most people do overlook or they ignore they don't know about okay so you know in our everyday hustling and mm. bustling we don't pay attention we don't pay to attention things. to all these so things just yeah. wake up get just the wake business up, get, done, get, go back <laughs> um so there are many things that we don't pay attention <clears throat> to okay i think one thing that we may not have been paying attention to is greeting just oh. a basic greeting basic good morning good afternoon how are you doing today mm. you know basic greetings like that even introducing yourself, how do you introduce yourself? You feel like introducing yourself is just mentioning your name. Hello, mm. I'm Tosin Babasaya Creek. But it's beyond that. Um, we don't pay attention to the way we introduce ourselves. Mm. We don't pay attention to the way we introduce other people. That skill of active listening mm. is also mm. not there. Mm. You know, because we live in a very fast-paced world. If mm. you live in Lagos, Nigeria, like mm. I do, you know that you don't have time for nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we call it. We just want things to be done. Fast, fast, fast. So we don't pay attention to what people are saying. We don't pay attention to respect, just common respect. Treating humans like humans and not animals. So the reason we are better than animals is because we can rationalize, we can think, mm. we can and we can be thoughtful about our interactions but yeah. that's one thing we're not paying attention to simple things like punctuality mm. yeah, okay we've ingrained african time mm. <laughs> into the way we do things that's true you call a meeting for 2 and 3 p.m we're still i mean we, aren't we all just guilty of that yeah, that's so true. these are little things we're not paying attention to we're not paying attention to apologizing sincerely to people when you wrong them mm. Mm. we don't pay attention to thinking before we talk um you know and, and simple things like even the dining etiquette what yeah. are the things that you're supposed to do yeah. when you want to eat mm. come on washing of hands and mm. and and disposing our refuse properly mm. you see even well-educated people roll down their glass mm. and throw things out the window you know those those really um simple things yet important things that we don't pay attention to so that a lot of things that we really need to be thoughtful about now based on what you said now regarding people don't pay attention to greeting and things like that is this supposed to is this supposed to be global which means is it is it is it, is it just restricted to some cultures because in 
an advanced world or let's say outside the country they don't they don't bother about say good morning and all of that they just you can see that some of some of them, their kids can just come up and say hi dad or things like that or they just they call you by your first name and they don't they don't care about it so is this an african thing or is this something that is expected okay, so, everywhere yeah worldwide? so maybe that's where manners come in so manners can be cultural but respect is respect everywhere you go to and greeting people is part of it so it doesn't it doesn't it, it like we yorubas we tend to <coughs> just put echo in everything echo, mm. you're standing <laughs> echo in the day you're sitting echo joko you know and all of that that's very cultural that doesn't really still mean that we respect mm. so it's the spirit behind your greeting that is really important so everywhere you go to even the western world where mm. we think they just say hi dad mm. there's the spirit behind that hi dad okay you know there's still the respect behind that hi dad um and that's what we're talking about generally but it's not just a nigerian thing even generally that we need to master the act of greeting people how do we greet people? How do we respond to people? Um, what does what do we mean when we greet people? Mm. We we may overdo it sometimes, you know. Uh, <laughs> have a joke of a friend <laughs> or some not a friend, an acquaintance uh, that was relocated mm. and someone had done something nice for him. And you know, here we would say, thank you for yesterday. <laughs> and then he went and said, Ah, thank you for yesterday. And I was like, <laughs> what, what did I do? What you know that no, really happened? confusing yes. thing. So for us here, thank you for yesterday is a perfect a greeting property. for for that guy over mm. there. It was like it didn't make sense. Exactly. So it, it doesn't really matter how we say the greeting, mm. but it's the respect behind the greeting that I want us to pay attention to. You just don't walk past people. When we were growing up, we were told when you walk past an adult say good morning good afternoon but we go to our, our children's schools these days they walk past you in fact some of them would almost hit you off the road mm. or you're climbing the staircase and someone is just descending the staircase and mm. they and there's no you know staying apart for you to pass and they almost hit you mm. you know that's that's what we're talking about mm. it's just the respect behind greeting people that i really want us to focus on now do you, do you think that that respect has has been eroded within a period of time or what do you think happened and how can people start really imbibing that culture again oh, so the world has has gone global yeah uh we don't pay mm. attention anymore true Okay, so when we were growing up, it was important for you to go flat down to Very greet well. an elder, to yes. kneel down and all yes. that. I remember um, a few years ago, and I, my daughter was about four or so then, we were strolling in the evening and an elderly woman was approaching us. And I remember telling her, make sure you curtsy, kneel, mm. you know. Mm. Don't, it's not the one at home that you do want to kneel. Mm. And you, yeah. <laughs> she preferred hugs and we obliged her. But all that, kneel when you see her, she's, you know. And then I got there and I was expecting her to kneel down. She just caught it. Mm. And I was expecting her to kneel down. She says to me, mommy, there are stones on the floor. Mm. <laughs> that was not the way I was raised. You know, my mom just needed to give me the side eye. Mm. And I, so. if she didn't even have to flat. cajole me and you go flat, whether there are stones or, or there not. are rocks on the Whatever floor. Be. So we must acknowledge the fact that things are changing. Mm. It's a fast paced world. The, the children are exposed, mm. way more exposed. They yeah. question us. In those days, we didn't question. We that's just true. did. As so that's the that's the thing that has changed mm. however i still want to advocate that we must not lose that culture mm. so as much as, as i'm a, an etiquette trainer mm. uh, and that's why i say that I, I talk about manners i talk about etiquette mm. we mustn't lose the culture <coughs> i still true. want you to be able to kneel you know um for people that but you don't carry that outside <laughs> okay <laughs> you don't what i mean by you don't carry that outside is that i i do not expect that if we travel on vacation and there's a white lady coming then you go down on your yes, knees that's right. you know it's just uh, having that discussion with them mm. but understanding that even the kneeling is not the, really the definition of the respect you mm. can kneel or prostrate and, and still be dis still, disrespectful yes, be but just teaching manners generally just courtesy generally the way you even say it matters i could kneel and say good afternoon mm. 
that's that's the tone of my voice is telling you that Martin, i don't so mean yeah, the, don't i'm mean just it. doing it because yes. i've been forced to do it or, or it's just cultural to do mm. it what about the way i say the good afternoon ma mm. you know and stuff like that so. what do you think people really pay attention to all these things because if you're saying what do you think is the advantage of imbibing this etiquette and and on manners because some people may say i've been having things that i want mm. and i've been getting the things that i want yeah. so why, why should i pay attention to say etiquette and manners maybe when you just have money you know some people just believe that if you have money everybody can about you what do you think is the advantage of etiquette and manners i, I think it just contributes to positive interactions okay and, and you know etiquette opens doors mm. what That's do people good. say about you when you're not in the room mm. Okay, and like I said, it's not until you prostrate or you kneel that mm. you've got manners or yes. you've got etiquette. Yes. It's just how you respect other people's opinion, respect other people as humans, That's right. how you behave around people. It's just you've been behaving extra well if I could put it that way. Mm. It's just you put in thoughtfulness. What's happening to us is that we're not putting thoughtfulness into Jeez. our interactions. Mm. That's that's generally what is happening to us. But if we can begin to bring thoughtfulness into our interactions with people, mm. then things will change. Not just allowing the fast-pacedness of the world to over, over, overtake us, mm. but being thoughtful about our interaction is as simple as holding the door for the person coming behind you. You know, this it's just the etiquette is just it's just common sense. Yeah. Etiquette is just common sense with a healthy dose of the golden rule. You know the golden rule says do unto others what you want them, what you'd want them to do to you, to do to you or yes. treat others the way you would like to be treated. That's the golden rule. So etiquette is just common sense mm. with that dose, healthy dose of the golden rule yes. in it. Yes. So what you don't want others to do to, to you, you, don't do, don't to, do others. to others. Act the way you would like people to do to, to, do you, to you to others. So really, it's just bringing thoughtfulness into our actions, thoughtfulness into our behaviors, thoughtfulness into our thoughts thoughtfulness into our speech our communication mm. that's what we need it's it's not it's not academic it's mm. not too academic mm. it's just you being intentional that i'm going to behave myself well mm. Mm. i'm not going to pee anywhere yes that's true you know mm. I, I remember <laughs> there was a time i wrote an article about peeing just everywhere mm. you know you just and then someone wrote back to me and said where are the public toilets you don't want us to pee everywhere where are the public toilets mm. and interestingly i was about eight months pregnant at that time that's true and you know that when you're like towards that time mm. you pee a lot you you have that need to use the bathroom and i remember i'd taken a road trip from lagos to Ibado, mm. and that should be over 100 kilometers right yeah, yeah. and i needed to pee on the way but just because i told myself i would not pee anywhere just anywhere i discovered that every filling station had toilets mm. every bank today for instance or was it just yesterday i was out with my daughter and she needed to pee and we walked into the hospital that was close to us all i needed to say can we use your bathroom and that's it so you can stop anywhere and just so you can fast food right? joints go in there and joints. tell them in fact you don't have to pretend you want to buy something can just, just go tell them can ahead. i use your bathroom of course, don't just go straight ahead. Meet the man at the door and say, I'd like to use your bathroom. Can you show me to your toilet? And that's it. Oh, okay. It's when we discover that somebody would say, okay, so what if it's right there on Third Mainland Bridge? Yes. That's the longest yeah. bridge we have in, uh, in Nigeria. <laughs> what if that's the place that you get mm. pressed? Before you got into Third Mainland Bridge, after you got after, after, after Third Mainland Bridge, you will mm. still find a toilet. Yes. Let's stop giving these excuses. Mm. If you determine that I am not going to do this, then you won't do it. That's right. So it's just thoughtfulness. It's just you deciding that this is that me. Is what you want to do. This is what I want to do. Now, in this age of social media, what etiquette do you think are crucial for online interaction? Okay. So the first thing is think before you post. Think before you post. Think before you post. I have an acronym for think. It's not my original idea. I picked <coughs> it up from somewhere. Okay. But that guides me. T-H-I-N-K. Number one, is it true? Number two, the H is, is, is it helpful? Mm -hmm. The I is, is it um, inspiring? That's the I. The I is, is it inspiring? The N is, is it necessary? Is it necessary? Is it necessary? And the K is, is it kind? And you can bring this acronym into your interactions, mm. whether it's the way you talk or when you're typing and you want to write or mm. when you're posting anything online. Mm. Think, is it true? Is it helpful? 
Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? And is it kind? But in this age of social media that we are, when people are chasing for the algorithm to favor them, people, most people don't put something that is true now or kind or all of that because you know, things like that maybe mm -hmm. doesn't bring in the algorithm. So mm -hmm. how do you balance those two scenarios? Because if someone is saying that I'll post what is true and maybe I post what is true and it's not, it, we just need what something is controversial. Wrong is wrong. Yeah. What is wrong is wrong. And that's why I tell people, what are your values? Has to come from values. Yeah, it has to come from values. It's it's not always. It doesn't always have to be about algorithms. I I run a YouTube channel, and I remember in those early days, I had people tell me, "This thing won't sell." Mm. Adults don't like to be told what to do. They exactly. don't like That's to exactly be told that this, this is manners, and, this is manners and whatever. And this is well, yeah. But guess what? If I was coming to gossip, mm. or if I was coming to, um, to make what do you call them reels? Is it uh. reels or? It will sell. Will sell any controversial Enter stuff. Controversial stuff we yeah. sell. Um, but what is my aim? Who do I want to be? How do I want people to look at me? What's the brand? Mm. That's what we're. That, that's what they. That, that's what we call it. What's the brand that you want to sell out there? How do you want people to perceive you? That will guide you on the things you would do. Mm. So unless I verify anything, mm. I don't post. I do not want anybody to say, I thought you said integrity was one of your values. Where did you get this from? Did you verify it? Mm. Okay. So I, I, I don't want to be sued for defamation of character. So I won't do it. It's not about the algorithm for me. People need to start thinking about these things. That, see, I need to think. Am I hurting someone by saying this? Mm. That, that so many posts that has, have sent people into depression. You don't want to That's be that true. person yes. that will send other people into depression. So think before you post and use that acronym. Mm. And then another thing is, or, unless you <clears> verify <throat> it, just stop forwarding things anyhow. Where is it from? And then please tag people. Mm. If you pick somebody's material and you're using it or pick someone's music, tag them. That's true. Let people know it's not your own intellectual property, somebody mm. else's own. These are yes. simple things that we need to pay attention to. Another thing that I, I think we should take off social media is oversharing. Over, you know, I feel that some parts of your life that should be private to you mm. and you don't need to. I see some things and they're, they're appalling and I'm like, this is not necessary. Mm for whatever reason algorithm or, or followers it's mm, not I necessary follow. i feel like you can be a brand out there and decide i won't do this it may take 10 years to achieve what i would do in one year if mm. i was posting mm. um you know things that people will come to mm. but at the end of the day i can sleep well in, at night knowing mm. that i am inspiring people that i and think is inspiring i think it's, yeah, it has to come from values just like you said because absolutely most people don't have that value for themselves to know that okay i'm not going to pose this. some people just have a particular goal i just want to trend i just want to get mm -hmm. followers or mm -hmm. i just want to make be controversial i just want to make the money mm -hmm. so if people out there are just thinking about making just making the money or just trying to make sure that they sound yes. controversial sometimes some people just don't put pay attention to the value stuff. So I think mm -hmm. I think like you said, it boils down to values. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What are your values? How do you want people to perceive you? You know, it's like you want to sell a product. Mm -hmm. How do what do you want people to say about the product that you're selling? So if it's not for for maybe for some other people, money, making money is their value. Mm -hmm. Doesn't yes. matter to them how they doesn't make matter it, to them how they make it. They just but, but that's not me. They're just interested in how just that's the money coming. That's, that's not me. Mm -hmm. You must you must ask yourself are you hurting other people mm. it's like many of us don't know that there's there's still life after death after death and you would give account at some point some will tell you don't, so, so don't some care. people don't care that see if god one day decides let me show the world uh -huh. what's the skeleton in your <laughs> in your cupboard it looks like <laughs> what would it look like <laughs> what would it look like <laughs> uh -huh. so we need to ask people are we kind with what we are posting and then, you know, like I said, also avoid the sharing, mm. uh, be thoughtful in mm. your sharing with people. These are things I need us to pay attention to when it comes to social media etiquette. Yeah. Now, when it comes to communication, how can individuals improve their communication etiquette, both verbally and in written form? Okay, so I like that you said both verbally and written. Yes. Um, so for verbal communication, your voice is the instrument here and you need to watch the way you use it. Hmm. So watch the tone of your voice, yeah. watch the pitch of your voice, hmm. watch the volume of your voice. 
volume. Now, yes, indeed. I remember that in class when I'm when I'm teaching communication skills, mm. there's this assignment that I give them. I'll tell them, look at this statement on the board. Mm. So let's give this example of this statement. I didn't say you were stupid. Did you hear that? I didn't say you were stupid. I will now tell them, pick each word. So I didn't say you were stupid as six mm. words in yes. that sentence. Mm. I will tell them, so I want somebody to stress each word. Okay. So for instance, if I'm stressing I, I didn't say you were stupid. Now stress didn't. I didn't say you were stupid. Mm. The next one. I didn't say you were stupid. Mm. The next one, I didn't say you were stupid. The next one, I didn't say you were stupid. The next one, I didn't say you were stupid. Now, do you know that those six times mm. had six different meanings? And it's true, yeah. Do you understand? That's true. So if what I'm trying to explain to someone is, ah, and I didn't say you were stupid, or meaning that I didn't say it. Mm. If you said it like, I didn't say you were stupid. Mm. What I am saying in with that last that statement, last where thing. I stressed stupid was, yes. I didn't say you were stupid. Yeah. I probably said you were, uh, you were, uh, <laughs> you are drunk or something. Do you understand? <laughs> Let's say this one. I didn't say you were stupid. What that meant is, I didn't say you were stupid. I must have acted it or I must have hummed it, but mm. you didn't say it mm. because I stressed the word say. Yeah. Maybe now, I hope I haven't confused you. <laughs> no, now, what I'm saying is that where you put your intonation or your tone can change the meaning of what you're saying. Yes, that's true. Simple thing is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm, yes, yes. Sorry, oh. <laughs> sorry, you. Uh -huh. <laughs> sorry now. Uh, sorry now. <laughs> so it's the same S O R R Y. Yes. But guess what? The way I said it changed the meaning. Yes. It's so true. watch your tone, your pitch, and your volume. Mm. If I want to reach you and I want something to sink into you, mm. I'll lower my voice. Mm. If it's an excitement, mm. I would increase my voice. Yes. So when it comes to verbal communication, be thoughtful about your volume, your mm. pitch, your tone. Wow. Bring respect into what you say. Active listening as well is effective communication. It's part mm. of communication. Being able to ask questions to get answers is a skill when it comes to verbal communication. Mm. Being able to make small talk mm. A wise person said, know something about everything and, and everything too. about something. So you've been able to contribute to discussions. That's effective about communication. That's, mm. that's good <clears throat> when you're not mute when we're talking about this particular subject and you're loud when we're talking about, you know, just being able to contribute, being able to do small talk. Mm. When you go on your networking events, can you, can you talk or do that's you true. run? Do you run away from mm. people? Mm. So that's verbal communication. Mm. Another thing I want to talk about when it comes to verbal communication is also paying attention to the non-verbal cues. Mm. You know, with verbal communication, it comes also with the non-verbal cues. How you using your body when you're talking, the, the body gesticulate, language. the body language, also backs up what you're saying. Mm. Yes. Okay. For the written communication, yeah. experts say that there are seven C's that we should consider mm. when, it, when we want effective written communication. And these C's can also apply to verbal communication, but more with written communication. And if I could say the seven C's, let me attempt to say that. I hope mm. I don't forget this. Hey, I hope I don't disgrace <laughs> myself right now. So the first C is, is it clear? Mm. Clarity. Okay, is it clear? Clarity. That's clarity. You know, because with written communication, you don't have the benefit of body language. Yes, yes, Do and you it's understand? true. Uh -huh. It could be misinterpreted. So it could be misinterpreted. So is That's it clear true. enough? That's number one. Number two, is it considerate? Mm. Okay. Considerate can also apply to verbal communication, but is it considerate with written communication? For instance, if I'm writing a body of work for children, mm. am I considering their um, you know, level of of um of understanding? Or I'm speaking big grammar that they can't comprehend. Mm. So that that considerate is am I considering the reader? Okay, so that's the second C. Another C is, is it uh, concise? 
Concise, that's true. Concise. So the fewer the words in your sentence, the easier it is for people to comprehend. Comprehend, that's true. Okay. Mm. Now the other one is, is it concrete? Mm. Is it concrete? Does it answer the five W's and one H? Why, why am I writing this? Who am I writing this? Where, what, what do I need to get from people and so on? Mm. So that's, that's four that I've mentioned, right? And then another one is, is it courteous? We're bringing courtesy into the mix again. That's true. Is it courteous? For instance, in written communication, if you write in all caps, mm, yes. that's you screaming yes. at people. Yes. That's you being aggressive at people. I've yes. seen people send me emails in all caps oh. and I'm thinking, <laughs> are you screaming at me? So that's that's aggressive. So is it courteous? I've mentioned five, right? Yes. Uh, no, now I have to remember the last two. So is it, I've said, is it clear? Mm-hmm. Is it concise? Mm-hmm. Is it considerate? Mm-hmm. Is it concrete? concrete. Is it courteous now i must remember the last two <laughs> you see me <laughs> okay so is it complete? Mm, complete is it complete complete is where you should ask the the five w's and the one h not really with concrete or mm. is it you know concrete is it is it a solid um f- formation mm. with your written communication can people comprehend it mm. and then the other one is is it complete for instance, if I say, Benzik, mm. please make sure you buy printer cartridges. Mm. That's not a complete um, request. It's true. What if we have more than one printer That's in the true. office? That's true. For which one? What colors of cartridges? Correct. When do you need it? Where do I get the money? How do I buy it? Mm. Where do I buy from? So I would rather have said, Benzik, we need um, black and white printer cartridges for the printer in my office by 12 noon tomorrow you can get the money from you know so so person something like that so is it complete i cannot pretend that i remember the seventh one i know it will come to me but (laughs) maybe we should just move on so those are the questions that you should ask when you're when you're dealing with written communication but which of them is more important is it the written or the verbal I won't say one is important, one is more important than the other. It it just comes to the context and and where we are using it. But the good thing about verbal communication is that you have the benefit of body language. Okay? So if I write to you, Benzik, I am sorry. Mm. You would understand it that Benzik, I'm sorry. But if if I say to you, Benzik, I am sorry. Mm. You can read can the read tone it. of my voice. You can maybe even see, see your me. Face. You can see my face. You can see how genuine how sorry genuine I am. it is. Yes. So verbal communication is is beautiful. Yes. But I wouldn't say that this is better, better than, than the other order. one. I think it just depends on where and when you have to use it. Then at what, so, what is where and when? Okay. Thank you. I, I was going to answer that. Mm. So verbal communication when you're trying to communicate something. Um, what's the word to use? Something sensitive. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. When you're trying to communicate something sensitive, I have a friend. And should I tell the story? I don't have a permission to tell it. So, mm-hmm. expects, okay, no, no, I must name. bring Can that. I, I must. I must bring that. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're about to break bad news mm. to someone, okay, verbal is better. In fact, verbal with your presence. We're sorry this happened. It's better than texting. Mm. So, so, so person just died. You don't know the state mm. that person is mm. at the time you're sending it. You're sending that. Uh-huh. So when you're trying to communicate something sensitive, verbal is important. Make it verbal. One on one, one on is one. important because people can see what you're saying. The body language also helps mm. with what you're saying. Yes. But when you're trying to communicate complex things, you can imagine if I'm tutoring you in math mm. and I want to teach you something on calculus and I just sit with you and I say, when well, dy and dx is and this, yes. this, 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 you can't picture you can't it, picture it. Uh-huh. unless I take a chalk or something and I, I write it down. Yeah. 
So That's because true. it's complex, it's mm. a complex com thing I'm trying to communicate, written is better so that Reading people better. can always go over and over and over again. Mm. When you need something, a permanent record of something, mm. written communication is better. It's better. Oh, that's I remember true. a long time ago that um, someone came to tell me about something. No, it wasn't someone coming to tell me. I had passed an information in my organization. The information had come from the top and I'd gone to tell people this physically that we're supposed to work on this and submit it by tomorrow or something. Mm. And when the boss called and said, where's the assignment I gave everybody? And I said, ah, well, I told you, I told all of you. And a few people said, when, 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 how? <laughs> and that's true. <laughs> how did because you tell me? It's not. That was the day I learned the importance of memo, mm. internal memo in the organization. Mm. So I remember that I would even do it more. I mm. would write the memo and make you sign that, that's you, true. that, you, that you received the that's memo. Or you read the memo so that's where written communication is important when you need something permanent a permanent record of something that happened otherwise people will say you didn't tell, you me. Didn't tell when me when did you say what that's was true. i doing where was i and you can't defend uh -huh. it and you can't defend it so this is that's why it's important for you to also note that the internet never forgets because mm. you, you're feeding the internet your written communication that's true okay that's so with that it can be recalled so you need to be careful about the things you post out there when you say things especially if you're not recorded saying it mm. you can always deny or mm. tell them yes. you're under the influence of something sleep yes. you're under the influence of sleep when you said mm. it but when it is written it's permanent when you have issues with your spouses should it be written or or verbal 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 communication, please. Verbal. <laughs> <laughs> Verbal, that's, that's sensitive. Very so, sensitive. Uh, um, I, I see some people go on social media to publicly apologize to their spouses. Exactly. And I tell myself, I don't think this is needed. It's, it's not... Uh, it's what is the, what the, the spouse demands? Publish it online for me to see. I, do not, I think it's quite insensitive Okay. Um, for a spouse to demand a public apology from, from a spouse. I, I feel like you're washing your dirty linen in public. Probably because they're public uh, figures, that's what I think. I don't know. I don't think it's necessary. Okay. I don't think when you were consummating mm. <laughs> your marriage, it <laughs> wasn't true. in the public. In public. <laughs> when you were getting married in itself or you joined in matrimony, yet yeah, people were there, but mm. I mean we, we don't know what transpired. So I don't think a spouse should demand a public apology from uh, any other spouse or the spouse that has that's it, so, done something wrong mm. I, I feel it's insensitive you know but that's my pov uh gen z's we say pov mm. my point of <laughs> my <view. laughs> when it comes to communicating with your boss or subordinates which which one better written or verbal so it depends on what you're communicating you know with this we've said if it's something sensitive um go say it if it's something complex mm. write it so I think it depends on what you're trying to communicate. There are some that you would just need to sit down with someone. Oh, I have, when I was going out yesterday, I have, I have a great idea. You could, you could say it verbally first, yes. you know, and then your boss, I remember, for instance, earlier today I had a meeting mm. with, with, my, with my boss and it was verbal. Mm. It was over Zoom. Okay. And after the meeting, I was told, oh, fantastic ideas you brought to the table, write them down. Excellent. So then it becomes a permanent thing that we can act on. So you can see where written and verbal come to play in that regard. Now, when it comes to a family gathering, what advice do you have for maintaining good manners during family gatherings and special occasions? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting question. Hmm. So first, respect. Respect. People. We may be cut from the same cloth, but we don't think the same the way. same way. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. So the children born by the same people, mm -hmm. but they don't act the same way. So respect people's individuality. Okay. Bring respect to play. And then family gatherings and the time for you to compare people. Mm. Look at your brother. Mm. He has done this. Look at your sister. She has done this. Respect people. Respect people's growth. Respect where they're coming from. Respect their experiences. Okay, and bring it to play when it comes to family gathering. Another thing at family gatherings, 
and, and this is from experience mm. and maybe not personal experience but from what i've seen mm. don't go into a family gathering thinking that you are the best of all people mm. i think it's immunity when you're able to help out with people mm. so don't go sit and expect people to serve you mm. because even the bible says that whoever wants to lead amongst you should be the servant of all mm. so it's okay for you to be able to roll up your sleeves and help uh, and you know no matter what position you're in in the mm. family help help with um you know chores help to clean up after a dinner for instance don't don't go there feeling that you're superior mm. family is family and that's where you can show your vulnerability so it's mm. okay for you to help mm. another thing on the flip side is that because someone is there to help mm. don't turn a particular person to the slave of all. all that's true so when it comes to family i think it's just respect when everybody comes together mm. and you know puts in their own quota of course, when you're going to a family gathering, pick up a gift along the way. Don't go empty and dead. So, you know, pay attention to that. Respect and then positive interaction is important. Also, learn to don't be mute mm. while others are talking. Mm. Contribute. But I said it's much it's much better if you don't have something sensible, sensible to say. Don't say anything. Okay, than so saying something and saying something stupid. So how do you balance that? It's mm. better for you to always have something sensitive, sensible to say. That's what I say. There should always be something sensible to say. Otherwise, um, you know, the more you communicate, the more we measure your confidence. Okay. So if you're not able to speak, then something is wrong. Of course, I agree with you that say something sensible. Don't say because um, Madam Coach, Manas Coach has said, I must talk. I must talk. So everybody is moving towards A because i must talk i am moving to z you know that's not what i'm saying but train yourself also to be able to communicate and there's something cute about not being the loudest in the room mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. don't be the loudest in the room allow the spotlight on other people so sometimes you even have superior knowledge you're widely traveled you've been mm -hmm. there you've done that but there's something really cute about mm -hmm. you just allowing others to shine whilst also putting in what you have to put in I, I'm close to someone that isn't, isn't such a big talker. That's just his person, mm. but he's a wise person. So when we have family meetings like that and so on, he's really not the first person to talk. But the meeting isn't over until they call him to contribute because they know he's full of wisdom. Mm. That's the kind of person you should be. So in as much as you are not blah, 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 when everybody is talking and you're saying that they say I must contribute, mm, mm. if you don't have anything to contribute, it's okay. But pay attention to what is being said. Give them the gift of your of your attention, and, and they will know that you are part of it. So it's not until you talk that they know that you are paying attention. Or you can concur with someone. Or opinion. concur, yeah, agree with you, you know, mm. something like that. And then when it's time for you to talk, you will talk. But don't be the loudest in the room. I, mm. I mean, don't do that. And like I said this is the time let me let me face the camera that mm. we're going to go home and and be with family please don't go comparing people don't go with inferiority complex don't come with superiority complex just enjoy yourself and enjoy the gift of family note that <laughs> <laughs> excellent okay now it's good you mentioned about this is the time so Thank when it comes you. to traveling and things like that are there etiquette you think one should be mindful of while traveling whether it's in public transport or it's in a hotel. Absolutely. So even from transportation to the hotel, uh. there are, let me even tell you. So I attempted to do an A to Z of etiquette. Okay. And I discovered <clears throat> that every letter of the alphabet has an etiquette attached to it. Mm. Interesting. You know, so I've been working on it for a while and hopefully one day I can push it out back. Nobody should steal my idea. <laughs> <laughs> so A, for instance, can mm. stand for airplane et etiquette or airline etiquette. You know, B can be for bathroom etiquette. C can be for cut C, D for dining etiquette. You know, it's just so many things mm. like that. Yeah. So from your travel time to when you get to the hotel, mm. there are many rules that guide you. So by the way, etiquette are rules that guide our behavior in a setting, in any setting, in a social setting, in, in a public setting or wherever. So in public transport, don't be, don't hoard the space. They call it man spreading. Mm. Be considerate of other people. Yeah, if it's public transport size. and they say that it's, it's four people <laughs> on this row, don't say that. I, I mm, want to no, take like half you. of it. 
well, I can't help plus size people plus like size me. People. <laughs> we will occupy the space we need to occupy. Let's just hope that the people sitting beside us are not plus, are not plus, plus size, size people. But even at that, you know, your body language should show that we're good, we can we can manage this, we can yes. do this. So even for public transportation, consider that. Don't play loud music. It's make sure you have your, your headphones or your headphones. Mm. Enjoy your music by yourself. Okay? Don't force people to listen to you preach. Mm. Do you understand? Well, they say it's uh, important. Uh, uh, that 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 that, that's quite sensitive. <laughs> it's so quite sensitive. It, it, it's okay for you to to want to preach. Yes. Of course, with the I, I think I've been in one transportation before, and I really like the way the guy said. The guy said, "Praise God! I hope it's okay. It's okay for me to share some words with mm, you." Mm. And he got the consent of people before he started. I felt that that was cute. Mm, that's, uh, um, not many before. people do that. People just all. come and then just come and they barrage just touch, you with yeah, barrage you with uh, yeah, So I, I feel it's just okay for you to get the concurrence of everyone before you do it you need and, to get and, concurrence and of everyone it. before you preach uh, something about the gospel uh, so, so yeah, you did take me where I, I know like <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm a Christian and I, I like I like evangelism mm. I, you know but the the manners part of me yes feel like you don't force things down people's roots and please don't quote me and, and, and god <laughs> have mercy. I, if i want to preach in public transport yes i would take permission okay so i, I know that i've done it once um mm. the, the public transport preaching mm. but i didn't stand up to preach to everyone mm. i remember just doing the evangelism with the people around me and i would always ask is it okay to mm talk to you mm, about yes. um, you know something that I know that mm. is good for you or someone that I know that can change yes. um, you know your life so these things we need to be sensitive about them honestly um, so you know that's that's what I'm going to say about that particular topic now when it comes to uh, giving what do you think are some of the thoughtful practices when it comes to giving and receiving gifts especially concerning diverse cultures you know people have different cultures when it comes to receiving gifts and giving gifts so what are the etiquettes behind okay, it? Okay, so for, for giving gifts, it's the thought behind it, first of all, for me. Okay. What's the thought behind it? So give thoughtful gifts. And you know, there's no gifting competition anywhere. It's just me giving you gifts is to tell you that you're in my thought. Okay? So there are gifts that are too sensitive. For instance, someone that you're not married to or you're not in any relationship with, why would you want to buy lingerie for mm. that person? Do you understand? Why yeah. would you want to buy laundry for that person? Or you may think that these people are too rich for me to give gifts to. Yeah. But you know, that's, that's not that, that could, it's the thought behind it. Thing. It's the thought they will yeah. appreciate the thought behind it. So mm. go to think about it. There are some things that people may never push aside. Mm. Yes. No matter how rich you are, mm. if I buy chicken for you, yes, you will eat it. Do yeah. you understand? Or even if you now have a yard full of chicken, you mm. would give it to someone else that needs it. That is still a thoughtful gift. Yes. Or I buy you a book. Do you understand? Or I mm. buy you a book. I'm traveling and I buy you a book. Or, or if I'm rich enough, I buy those limited edition books or whatever because I know that I'm giving it to someone that can pretty much afford everything. Mm. So it's a thought behind the gifts. Like I said, there's no competition anywhere. Some people despise um, it and say, what, is, what kind of gift is this? No, I don't think so. I, 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 and that's why you should put some thoughtfulness into your gifts. Okay. So it will Do be you despised. Understand? Uh -huh. So that you're meeting the need of that person. The need might not be the physical need, it might also just be the emotional need. So that's why I said that it's the thought behind the gift. It's not really the size of the gift. Of course, don't give gifts that will be insulting to people. Mm -hmm. Okay. But is it good? Is it good to despise a gift when someone gi gives no, you something? No, not at all. Please don't despise any gift. I remember, for instance, that a bride. It was on social media. She was getting married, and she wanted a certain look for her bridesmaids. Mm. So she went to the market, and she bought. She bought the materials mm. for the bridesmaids, and then someone replied and said, "What kind of cheap material is that? Did I tell you I don't have wow. clothes in my wardrobe?" And, it, wow. and I feel like it's a day. Wow. She even went out of her way to use her money. Mm. So if you are truly a friend that is proud enough to be that she 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 
trusted you enough to want you to be on a train. Mm. You should appreciate it. That's Don't true. despise anybody's gifts. That's that's wrong. That's true. That person was thoughtful to give you something. Mm. But on the flip side also, please be thoughtful about the gifts that you're giving people so that they don't toss it in the bin and just feel like, what's this? But then to the other people, please, whatever, if anyone gives you a gift, appreciate it. It costs them something, no matter how, no matter how little, little it, is. it is. Yes. Mm, that's true. Now, when it comes to apology, what do you, when someone makes a mistake, what do you think are the proper etiquette for offering and accepting apologies? Okay. You know, we've talked about the tone of your voice before okay. now. So yeah. bring that to play. When you, when you have done something wrong and you need to apologize, do it genuinely. Don't do it because I want the matter to, to, to I want to quell the matter. Mm. So let me just throw an apology so that we can move on. Do it genuinely. If you know that you've put your foot in your mouth, mm. that's what I call it. Yes. You have run your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> apologize and, yes. and move on. And, and you know, just let it be, be from your heart. That's the only etiquette. You just ensure that it's from your heart. And, and let bygone be bygone. That's true. Now, when, well, let's bring it down to more, more to more like career and business or entrepreneurship. Now, when it comes to uh, client interaction, what role does etiquette play in maintaining positive relationship with clients and customers? Okay, so um, mm. it's a bit of customer service. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> etiquette would always be about respect. Okay. And respect for positive interactions. Yeah. yeah genuinely respect people promise and over deliver promise and over deliver promise and over deliver um, and then if you for instance said it would be this timeline please adhere to the timeline so there's this culture around here that we need to we need to kill mm, yes. and that's not keeping to time not keeping to prom our promise promise yeah okay so you see the wow, meme. You see the meme going round when it's festive season. When that you and your tailor. You and your tailor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of and it is. That's just what it is. And we must stop it. Why do you want to take up something that you cannot, you cannot do? do? Why don't you say that I am overbooked, I'm overbooked at the moment? I won't be able to do it. And that will make you stand out. It will make you, you know, stand out. Trust you. And, exactly. You know. Or. I know that I could finish this in four days, but let me communicate a week mm. to my customer so that if I finish in four days, like I know I have the internal commitment to finish in four days. Mm. If I tell you it's going to happen in a week and I give you in four days, they're surprised, they're, they're impressed with you. Oh yeah, you know, they're impressed with you. They will tell you that she always delivers mm. on her promise. So please keep to your words, keep to your promise. Whatever you say you'll do, do it. And go above and beyond for your customers. And the, you know, the simple thank you notes. Mm. People need to learn to do that. The simple thank you notes to whatever people are, are buying from you. If you want to be, do giveaways during the season, do a giveaway. Let people know that you truly appreciate their patronage. Don't even take it for granted. And there's this one thing that we need to kill. It is this no refund, no return policy. No return, that no say, refund. I don't think so because even out there in the western world you can report return things you can you can return so why we say no return no refund yeah i, I mean it irks me and I, I think that's something that we must so you think it, no about. return no refund policy do you think it's not it's not good because some people may take something intentionally especially in this part of the world that we are in some may take something intentionally just maybe to wait or to or to peruse through it or just to do so they can so that would with, with the intention to return it so maybe that's where that some people come with that no return policy or what it, they it think comes to, can be able it to comes to the reason why you're returning it does that make sense to you so if i say that there's a return policy return within 24 hours oh yeah do yeah. you understand yes return within 24 hours we know the way we gave it to you you certified it mm. if you received it as as good yes yes do you understand yes that's so true. returning it spoilt is there's something you know that is absolutely wrong with that yes and that's why some some gadgets for instance will come with warranties that's true there's a so i mean i think you should be able to do it and don't think that all your customers would always return things if you have given them what they ordered for they won't return it mm, that's true now when it comes to negotiation negotiating with client what manners do you think an individual should imbibe to ensure a fair and constructive process um negotiation yes 
Well, I, I mean, I would say that respect will still come in here. Mm. Um, like, you know, you need be, to, yes. if you need to, like, if you know, if you need to communicate to some client, some client that when you want to discuss or maybe clients reach out to you and they say, oh, I want to get this from you. Mm -hmm. And you guys are discussing based on negotiation. Are you going to be firm when it comes to your pricing? Or are you going to be just try to see how you create some balance or just trying to say, oh, just, just, how do you sound? You know, I, I think it so comes down to, sure to I think it comes down to what works for you. Okay? And that's why people need to go learn business. Okay. Sometimes you feel like business is the profit you're making over something. Mm. But what about the other things attached to it? Your time, your resources, your your um your office space, for instance, the yes. shop space. Mm. You have to bring everything inside. So when you're negotiating with people if it's not if you're not getting what you want then it's okay to respectfully decline that i can't go lower than this you should have a benchmark okay. you're in business to make profits yes that's true and like i said don't just think that because i bought this tab for 20 naira yes then i sell it for 40 naira and you think oh i've made big profit yes have you forgotten the time that you spent to purchase it yes have you forgotten that you took transportation mm. a paid um transportation uh fare mm. to where you purchased it mm. have you forgotten that you're paying rent for your shop yeah all of those things should be factored in so when you factor everything in and someone is saying oh collect 30 30 000 now mm. yes you you know and you're thinking you know, ten thousand is still a fair deal yes it's not a fair deal because mm. you didn't calculate it well so it's important for you to understand what your benchmark is and communicate it with respect mm. that's and true. that's why some people would i know your market mm. know your market if the product you're selling are premium products know your target market mm. otherwise you can't say i'm selling a pre premium product to people that obviously cannot afford it mm. what they will do is that they will price it low mm. if i walk into the supermarket and for instance i walk into into um you know the popular city mall in 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 alausa lagos and i go to the food session and i pick a bunch of bananas i can't negotiate it the price is there but if I go into the market mm. and I want to pick a bunch of bananas, I can't negotiate it. Mm. And that's based on the fact that this is an open stall. Yeah. People did not put AC on this banana to cool it. So that's true. Do you understand? <laughs> it's true. Uh -huh. So who is your target market? That would, that would show how you're going to price it. So I don't mm. expect that I will go into the open stall yeah. and that person would insist this is the price. This is the price. And would not. And you know, they can be quite nasty. Some of them, some of them could be nasty. If you don't want to buy it, put it you down. Put it down, yes. Uh -huh. And sometimes I just allow it to happen because... But the person that put AC on the bananas and has 12 staff around the, around bananas, the bananas, the price can be the same. So know where you're going. That's and know true. if people can afford you. Mm. Okay, now you shared something on your page regarding uh, work and office uh, unprofessional behaviors. Mm -hmm. Can you share like five unprofessional behaviors that you think should be avoided at all costs? Okay, so the first one, the one that irks me mm. is people eating at their desks. Mm. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and openly for that matter. So I feel like every office space should have a corner, a, 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 a you know a, a, an eating area or just a private place where people can eat and you know that our food can be very um spicy yeah you yeah. know so the aroma of the food and it just permeates everywhere and and then it's just on professionals since you're eating and uh, the clients around so I, I think that we should take that off completely 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 every office should design their space in such a way that people can go to some place to eat and not at the you do you know if you have your own personal office. office you can eat there I, I in fact i feel personally yeah. i i feel like it's not nice to do so mm. but when it's your personal office like mm. you say personal office mm. but what if a client comes, comes in, in yes that's just after you're, uh, that's you're after taking you know, something you're low cost beans <laughs> in it. <laughs> so i feel it's good and then you know having a space where people eat can also also 
promote com camaraderie yes. amongst workers. So yes. let's have a lunch period where people can, if batch of people can go eat and come back and eat. Mm. If I walk away from your desk, let blood flow through your legs and then mm. come back. That's true. I, so I think that's number nice. one. It gives Eating. you. It also gives you the opportunity to go into the um, restroom to pick your teeth when you finish and maybe rinse your mouth and freshen up yeah. when you move away from your desk. Another thing is, you know, applying the makeup and all that at the desk. Mm. I feel that that's, that's not proper. Another thing that we need to watch is the kinds of things that we display around our offices. Mm. Now, I'd walked into a government parastatal once, and you know, the chairman of that parastatal is a Muslim. Okay. And apparently the secretary is a Christian and I am a Christian and I like to say boldly that yes I am. But you know what this lady did? She put a a, a sticker on the door. Oh. A sticker that is very Christianese. Mm. I don't want to quote what is is on that sticker. And I felt that this this wasn't proper. Mm. Mm. Okay. I feel like you should consider other people. That the chairman may have just felt nothing but also consider that this is a diverse work environment yeah so if i'm putting anything let it be private to me mm. not public to everybody so what are the kinds of things that you display around you some people you walk past them and it's nudes mm. Mm. that's true yeah i had that's walked true. past the colleague before and it's the the whatever was a nude i mean so what are the things that you display around you that's another thing that must go another thing that we must discourage is loud Calls. Telephone calls. Sometimes mm. you're even holding private conversations at your desk with other people around. And then please avoid office gossip. Mm. Oh, please avoid, avoid it. it. <laughs> oh, please avoid it as much as possible. If you're walking into office gossip, take yourself oh, away from it. Come out of it. You don't want to be that person. You don't want to be involved. And of course, you should know that anyone that gossips with you, mm. five minutes later, will gossip, gossip about, about you. So That's don't be true. part of it. Mm, I wow. could go on and on. This and on. Is, wow, this is excellent. Now, when it comes to wardrobe manners, yeah, in an office and workplace life balance, what do you have to say regarding wardrobe manners generally? Wardrobe, mm -hmm. yes. So you know, there's a cliche that, and I don't like to quote cliche, but this cliche is something that we must quote. You are dressed the way you dress. Mm. So please mm. pay attention to your dressing. Okay. The Center for Talent Innovation in the U.S. said that leadership roles are granted to people that also act the parts. Mm. So performance is good, oh, eh? yeah. exposure okay. is good, mm. but image is also very important. And leadership roles will be given to people that also act the part. So act the part, dress the part, speak like a leader. And leadership roles will be given to you, of course, based on the fact that you have performed and you have earned that leadership role. Because mm. what it means is that if 10 people are qualified for a leadership role, we begin to look beyond performance. That's true. We begin to look at simple things like dressing, like 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 how you speak and how you communicate and you know stuff like that. Mm. So dressing is really important. Pay mm. attention to the way you dress to the office. Is there a particular kind of dressing depending on the place you want to go? Oh, it and depends like on that. where you where you work. For some organizations, it's business formal all the way. So you find that find that in banks where you have to have your tie and your suit on all the way yeah. for some other organizations smart casual you know you could just talk in your shirt mm. but what i tell people is that no matter what the dress code is be a lead to mm. um and you know it's better to be overdressed than to be underdressed that's that's what i think mm. so just put your things together and much more um with the dressing is also with the with your grooming so smell nice mm. wash your clothes launder your clothes iron them and just look neat so that mm. you don't look hard pressed. You don't look like a, so this, the, the, you know, everything is wrong with you. When it comes to outing, when you go out there, you see people dressing generally almost half nude and all of that. How, what, what do you have to say regarding things like that? Is it this, just to bring attention or things like that? There's this one I need to talk about and it's becoming, it, uh, it's becoming an issue. Um, so you go to weddings mm. and you see bridesmaids That's true. with their slits almost up to their uh, to, to their privates. Yeah, everything almost everything coming is, out. You know, the, see, the longer your sleeves, the more formal you look. Look at the women that we really admire. You see that they're really well covered up. Mm. You know, you keep anything precious, you keep it under wraps. So it's very uncool, especially when they start dancing. All the, the laps are out there. Out. Everything is just out. I think it's not proper. I think you should cover up. But the more you cover yourself, look at the classy ladies, they're covered up. 
So please cover yourself of this. The, 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 this thing about it, you've got it, flaunt it, does flaunt not it. happen here. And that's why you would walk past and people would be cat calling you, say, mm. yeah. is that your name? That's, that's the effect of that. Because of the way you're dressed. So please dress properly, cover up as much as possible. You know, the clothes that fit you, wear clothes that suit your style, clothes mm. that suit your body. And just please cover up mm. and, and keep things under wraps. It's it's so uncool when everything is just out and, and people are embarrassed for embarrassed you. Around you. People are embarrassed for you and wow. embarrassed around you. Wow. Now when it comes to making uh impression, does it have to be with dressing when it comes to making a powerful first impression? What do you have to say? Does it have to be with dressing, how you speak or how you appear or how you talk? E everything is total package. Okay. Of course, the first thing is the dressing, you yes. know, because you're either gone or done in 30 seconds. Before mm. people hear you speak, they see you and they make their conclusions about you. Some of the time, these things may be wrong. So make sure that the way you present yourself is in congruence with what you want people to know and say about you. Mm. So powerful first impressions begin with how you get into a room, <laughs> how you look, and then we can talk about how you talk and, and you know your body language generally, that mm. confidence that you exude. So it's important for us to, I mean, I spoke well about the, the, the power of first impressions in my YouTube, yes. about two of my YouTube videos that exactly. need to, to be watched. Exactly. And guys, I'm going to link it in the description. Now, just, we're about, as we're about to round up now, I have like just uh, two more final questions. The first one, if someone is suffering right now from low self-esteem, I think you did a video about it. What's one of the best ways to start coming out from lack of confidence and low self-esteem? Okay, so the first thing for me is self-awareness. Okay. You're just understanding and agreeing that I think there's something wrong with me that needs work. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. It's called self-awareness. Understand what makes you tick, your strengths and your weaknesses. Understand where you've, you're getting your conditioning from. Could it have been something in your childhood? Could it have been one trauma or the other? Could it have been you living under very strict um, you know, parentage, what was it that has pulled you down and has given you that low self-esteem? I think that the battle is won. Mm. Or you can begin to win that battle. Yeah. When you understand your conditioning and, and what's causing this, where are you coming from? And so when once you know that, I think you can now begin to work on yourself. Wow. So what's that thing that makes you when you when you dwell and you, you focus on the area of your strengths mm. confidence you exude confidence mm. when you know that these are my strengths and I, if i'm a good singer i know that there's no one that sings quite like me that's what makes me tick and i begin to work on my singing skills that confidence comes in because i know mm. this is where i play you know and then begin to check all of those things that are giving you self-confidence have people body shamed you in the past begin to positively speak to yourself mm, you know yeah. i remember that I, I grew up really tall and, and skinny yeah <laughs> yeah <know? laughs> i mean there's a story behind that but i did not have to even have the time to mm. and i didn't see myself as a beautiful person i just but as soon as i realized that okay i think i have an issue here and I began to look at myself. I would stand in the front of the mirror and say to Yoruba, I'm more fine, no case. Mm. You know, it wasn't as if I, I, I saw that I needed to speak that beauty into yeah. my life. I know that sort of, you're beautiful, you're, you're authentic. Yes, that's you true. do not have to wear this mm, that's true. particularly. You don't have to be too expensive to be beautiful. That's so self-talk, self-affirmation, who are the people you listen to? Who are the people you roll with? What's the company that you keep? You need to keep the company of people that see the good in you and not magnify the bad in you. Excellent. And somehow it's work in progress. You will get Wow, there. excellent. <laughs> hey, now, so finalizing tonight, one of your videos, you mentioned something about uh, keys that can make someone shine out, social keys that can make someone shine out in every situation. Can you see like five of them that can make you shine out in every situation you find yourself? Okay, so confidence is one of them. Okay. Yeah, you know, just being confident. Another social skill that we underrate around here is listening. Mm. It's a skill. It's a skill, and it's true. Oh, it's a skill. And it's true. <laughs> and it's true. Sometimes you keep telling someone, "Listen to me. Yeah. Listen to me." The person is not. You'll be wondering this person not, before you see one or two words. The person has inter interrupted mm -hmm. you. But well, people have that issue when it comes to listening. Listening is a skill that you must bring into into play. Mm -hmm. And then gratitude, gratitude is another one. Don't be miserly with saying nice things to people. 
Mm. Appreciate people. Be grateful for the time. Be grateful for people around you. So gratitude is another one that you must bring into place. Another thing that I can't even underrate this is dressing. Mm. Dressing is a beautiful form of politeness. So, so dress well. I said dress well. You don't necessarily have to dress expensive. But, you know, dressing well shows people that you respect them. You mm. respect the occasion. You respect the presence of other people. So take your time to dress well. Smell nice. Don't let people hold their breath when That's you're true. around them. Mm. You know, those are the That's things true. that you don't be loud. Mm. Don't be loud. And classy, this is something about humility that makes you classy mm. you're not the loudest in the room you're not the shouty one you're, mm. you're not that kind of person you know that you're supposed to be at the head table mm. that's where you belong mm. but there's something cute about coming and sitting at the pew and allowing them to announce and, and move you to the head table even the bible says it, that don't go to the head table it's better for you to sit here mm. and let them invite you to the head table that's than true. to go to the head table and they, they, they tell you are uh, we're sorry, we don't have yeah, so you're not, you're not saying, yeah, yeah, it's just more something cute and something I like to call it sexy, mm. something sexy about humility. Yes, just bring it to play. Be a likable person, mm. you know, genuinely be interested in other people. But one thing I'll reiterate again that we need to work on as it's a very people important. is active listening. It's active listening that is very powerful. That active listening okay. is quite very, very important because sometimes you just keep talking and it's as though you're just talking to yourself Absolutely. and someone. If you're not paying attention. So as we run into what are the, your final words that you have to say regarding etiquette generally and good manners? Yes, please. We, we must. Um, I remember that when I wanted to start this, someone expressly told me mm, it would be tough. Mm. Adults don't like to be told what, what to, to do. do. Mm. And we must understand that, um, you know, some adults are like the dry fish. You know, the dry fish you buy in the market that is already loud. <laughs> yes. And you can straighten it anymore. It. Yes. That's, uh, and so it might be. It might be hard, but this wise man, Alvin Toffler, said the illiterates of the 21st century, yes. we no longer be people that can't read or write, but people that can learn, unlearn, and, and we learn. Excellent. So we must come to the point that, see, I know I was brought up this way. Mm. But I want to recreate myself. Yes. I want to begin to unlearn some things. I want to be intentional about some things. Yes. And you know the basis for etiquette is love. Mm please let's love one another let's genuinely care for people around us if you care for someone for instance you caught someone in the act of stealing mm. if you genuinely love a fellow human being the next thing you do is not to throw a tire on them and throw a match a, a, a matchstick at them mm. you would allow the police to do the, the police to do their job that's true that's because you love people and you respect people mm. so please respect other people genuinely care for other people mm. and, and manners and etiquette becomes easy mm. when you respect and love people genuinely wow what I wanted to do something, but I don't know what that etiquette, you know, when you're dealing with someone of etiquette, mm, expert and coach like that, you, you don't know what you're doing. It's wrong <laughs> or right? <laughs> I want to ask you, no, maybe let me ask it. I, I, I didn't intend to ask, but let me ask you, what do you think about handshake? Do you, what do you have to say regarding etiquette when it comes to handshake, when it comes to male, when it comes to female? Oh, there's, so there's functions. a whole lot. Um, and I think I did a video, I did a video on handshakes. And mm. if you don't mind also putting that I'll in put the description that okay. so that we don't spend so much time talking about it. But handshakes is, is part of business etiquette that we must talk about. So it's okay for you to shake hands with people. Um, I'll just say this, for instance, that there was a first lady, an American first lady, beautiful first lady, but the, the our first visit mm. as a first lady to mm. to the UK, she stretched her hands to the <laughs> Queen, <laughs> and the tabloids did not forgive her for like four months straight. Wow. But how can you stretch your hands to our Queen? Wow! You know, so there's there's a whole lot of etiquette around. Who should you stretch your hands to? For instance, don't stretch your hands to a high-ranking person. Okay. First, mm. let them be the ones to give them their hands. Don't stretch your hands first to an older person. Let them be the ones to shake you first. In some other countries, you don't even stretch your hands to a female. 
Mm. You know, so these are things that you must you must consider. So there's a whole lot of, of things that we could talk about when it comes to handshaking. Wow, excellent. This is our context. Can I can we shake? Absolutely. It Thank you. <laughs> it's a very great one. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. So guys, that's this is very good and it's wonderful. She shared Thank a lot you. and it's quite very interesting. Thank so how you. can people get to reach out to you? People get to know you more, learn more from you. Okay, so I am Tosin Babasa Ya Craig across all social media platforms. Get mm -hmm. on LinkedIn, you see Tosin Babasa Ya Craig. And then the interesting fact is that I have a YouTube channel called Manners on the Go. So all you need to do is get on YouTube and search for Manners on the Go. We have over a hundred videos for you. So mm -hmm. just scroll down interesting videos that cut across many of the topics that we've spoken about today mm. and cheers to a better you mm. <laughs> thank you so much excellent so that is it guys you have heard from our new experts here when it comes to etiquette and coach and i believe you have learned so much from this and there are many more we're going to do and we probably maybe we'll do a part two of this it depends on how it goes but i believe you've learned so much from this my name still remains benzik and if it's the first time i coming to this channel do wait to hit the subscribe button turn on the post notification and don't forget to share this video with one or two persons and i will see you again next time cheers cheers <laughs>